I'm uh, TJ Bonato. I am the range coordinator here at Slick2 um, for Firefly Aerospace. My name is Justin Folan, and I'm a launch engineer at Firefly. Part of my job is interfacing with uh, SLD-30, so the Space Force wing that's out here. So I work with them to coordinate our missions, and so we need to work with them for weather support, airspace clearance, sea space clearance, telemetry, long-range optics, all the things that you need outside of just the rocket and the pad to make a launch successful. For Flight 6, I'm going to be the launch conductor. What that means is they're in charge of all the operations that it takes to launch the rocket. And that means that starting from the vehicle being put onto the pad, I run all of the checkouts to make sure that the vehicle is performing nominally and that the pad systems are performing nominally. On the day of launch, I physically run through the procedure, the master launch procedure, and make sure that all of the teams reach T0 at the same time. You get that removed before flight time. You got it. That's the main thing to check. Yeah. Before you, yeah. Make sure it's in, unless you're flying. <laughs> My role up to this point has been getting the vehicle ready from a range compliance standpoint. So making sure that the, the vehicle's in a healthy spot as far as you know our compliance documents and working with that team, doing all of our L-1 testing. So a lot of that pre-launch testing, pre-launch uh, documentation and making sure that any changes we make to the vehicle get reflected in the range documentation so they know how to support us and are all the kind of pieces falling into a line here now that the, the vehicle is ready to go. Yeah, so I, I do the go, no, go polls. I'm reading the procedure. If you're listening to the live stream, that's mostly my voice that you're going to be hearing. Propulsion, so structures, fluids, GNC, avionics. Part of my job is on being on my phone almost like 24-7 of calling this guy, texting this guy, trying this line, that line. How do I get to people to make sure everyone has the info that they need to go execute on the timeline? Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Just me on my phone. Launch day for me uh, begins around nine hours before T0. Wake up, you know, try my best to get a normal routine in. This launch I'm starting at 11 p.m., so it's a little weird uh, as far as like breakfast versus dinner. And we'll also Head into the LCC and I just start doing launch ops with the team. So stepping through our master launch procedure, making sure that every step is bought off appropriately, um, that everyone is acting within the system. And if any issues come up during launch operations, I'm the kind of the first line of defense on solving those and making sure that we execute our path uh, to get to T0. So typically, day of launch, I show up on console as the range coordinator. That's a you know a console role. Uh, typically, five to six hours before T zero, and I'm checking in with the the range partners. So we have a call to stations, we call it, which is kind of like the uh, attendance check around T minus four hours, making sure all the players that we need to be successful on day of launch are there. The safety team, the weather team, the range operations team, the airspace clearance team, all of those folks that kind of mesh together as a holistic unit to get us through T zero. So we're talking to them. Eventually, we turn on the vehicle transmitters, we start doing telemetry checkouts to make sure that the range can receive our telemetry, process it, disseminate it to the appropriate folks that need uh, to see it. We'll get into flight termination system checkouts, uh, voice checkouts, video checkouts, all of that good stuff. And then hopefully by T minus two hours or so, I'm kind of sitting back, hands on, letting the vehicle team do their work, loading up the propellants, getting ready up to including T zero. And then the vehicle takes off and that kind of pivots the team. As the launch conductor, when the rocket clears the pad, I immediately shift from flight six into flight seven. So before we've even done a stage separation, I am focused on getting the ground system safe and ready for our red team to approach. And I'm also focused on getting the pad reconfigured for our next launch. And then the other half of the team, myself included, are doing what we call ascent operations. So as the vehicle's flying through space, are we tracking it correctly? Are we getting good data? Are there any anomalies? How are we responding to any anomalies that are going on board? Hopefully nothing happens, up to and including um, the final state of the vehicle, which is called passivation. So before we even are done with the flight, I'm already focused on the next mission and what work has to be done and what is our path to getting towards that next mission. So even before everyone else, I'm not, not a ton of celebration, there's definitely some celebration, but immediately in that control room, I'm focused on the next flight already. My proudest achievement probably comes from when I was an intern in 2021, I was tasked with building one of the fluid systems here at the pad. Uh, as an intern, that was a pretty daunting task. You know, I didn't know a bunch about ground fluids engineering. I didn't know a bunch about 
Firefly. I was still in college. Uh, I must have all these knowledge gaps. And then here I was with a bunch of responsibility as an intern. Um, and watching that project and seeing my hard work pay off from really just putting my head down and, and learning and filling in those knowledge gaps to activating the system and it working successfully on Flight One, that is by far the biggest achievement that I've had at Firefly. This is the pneumatics room. Pneumatics room. Yeah, so all the fluid systems physically go through, all the gas systems, they like go through this room before they go out to the pad. And the through three gases that are on the pad, um, we've got high pressure nitrogen, so 6,000 PSI. We've got low pressure nitrogen, 2250. And then we've got high pressure helium. Um, but we want nitrogen in some places we want it down to like a trickle purge 10 PSI. So we only have three sources. This is where we keep them, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure helium. In this room, each of these modules is gonna be regulating that pressure down to whatever it is, and then taking it wherever we wanna go. So maybe it's to the RP1 farm, maybe it's the LOX farm, maybe it's to the room next door or somewhere else in this room. Uh, so this is where we like regulate all that. So these set points are, are pretty big and important. And like one of the main things that we check before we go to, into a launch. I'm the responsible engineer for half of the fluid systems on the pad. Yeah. Um, so then I, so like I have helium, one of those gases, I'm in charge of that one. Um, but then nitrogen interfaces with every single system. So uh, like TTEB is one of my systems, RP1 is one of my systems, TVC. So uh, they're all interfaced and somewhat controlled from this room. So like, I, these are for my systems, these are for my systems. So are these, um, and, and those two right there. So it's, uh, every system at some point runs, almost every system at some point runs through this room. This is like the, the heart and the lungs of the launch pad. And then next door, the eye bay, that's where all the computers live. That's the brain. <laughs> We at Firefly try and cross-populate um, skill sets across multiple teams because you know we're all one Firefly team, and so we want to leverage skill sets. So uh, last year I was working with the Blue Ghost Lunar Lander team when they were first getting ready into the kind of training and simulations phase of their mission, um, leveraging a lot of my experience from another launch provider working on orbit operations and kind of helping that team understand of like, hey, when uh, unlike the rocket, which you know when it takes off it's going to go do its thing, everything is very pre-programmed and deterministic. When you have a lunar lander, you can actually you can command it and you can do things and that is very scary but also very exciting because it gives you the opportunity to save yourself on a bad day but also could maybe get you into that world so really kind of framing how operations work and uh, working with them with our partners over at NASA to really kind of set a baseline of like this is the standard that we have at Firefly for doing mission operations and from all the way down to the level of like how do you use the comm voice panel how do you do a comm check with someone how do you communicate to them hey yes I can hear you loud and clear you know it's kind of cliche but when you watch like all these action movies people are always doing comm checks and like I got you five by what does that actually mean um, and how does that translate into a successful operation so so really setting a good foundation for them they took and they just ran with you know I got to sit in on some of the simulations and they were really very thorough and it really set the team up for I mean as we saw great success right we landed on the moon upright had a really great mission and you know that starts day one with your training in your sim environment and so I was happy to, to really help and support them to help invest um, training early on because I think it paid dividends.